Hi, I'm Kelly Bennett with Backstage 360. We are here at NAMM in beautiful Anaheim at the Hilton Hotel, and we've got Rick Cabot Podmore, who is a phenomenal music producer, songwriter, and artist that I've known for quite some time. And seriously, you are a genius at your music. <laughs> well, thank you. Um, hope lightning doesn't strike. Oh, you are. Um, so tell me, you were in a band called Arrival back in the day, and when did that band start? Tell me a little bit about a back history about that. Arrival began in 1986, and we pretty much, um, we based all of the band on making records as opposed to being a touring entity and playing live and stuff like that. We were more interested in writing our own material and, um, and recording, so we were basically kind of, you know, tucked away in a recording studio, and we uh, kind of accumulated a lot of master recordings of our material through the years, and um, released a few records. Uh, but you did play. You did play on stages, though. To get very your... rarely, very, very rarely. Yeah, we, it was. Uh, we just, you know, we found the value more in trying to get a recording contract and get through those doors as opposed to, you know, going out and um, fulfilling the instant gratification of a live performance. That was just how we looked at it. That was just our approach to it. Um, don't know if that was right or wrong, couldn't tell you, but uh, that was what, you know, my main background was recording, and so we kind of took advantage of that. But you did um, write some songs, and you guys did record, and you have a pretty good fan base, correct? We have a deeply disturbed fan base. <laughs> that much I okay, can, can you expand upon that? <laughs> well, I say that because we, we did have these pockets around the world where all of a sudden... You know, thousands of records would be going, you know, off the shelves, so to speak. And um, then all of a sudden, you know, we're out of print. And now we get, we push forward into the 21st century with platforms like Amazon.com and eBay and whatever. And all of a sudden, an arrival record will pop up and somebody's trying to sell it for like a $1,000. And and I'm like, (laughs) I'm just like... I wish I could get some of that money, you know. Hey, I, you know, I only got the, the little part of the eight dollars of the wholesale, you know. Um, so yeah, that, that's kind of where I come from with that. Is that you know that we do have fans. Um, it's really nice to see that, and it's flattering when uh, every once in a while somebody will reach out to me on social media and say, you know, are, is there going to be a new arrival product? What you know, what's happening? Well, when did the band break up, and when was the last? I mean, what was the date? Well, there, the, the, the funny part about it is is that there really wasn't any formal breaking up of the band. Um, we really, truthfully, we were able to kind of maneuver through this, and we had, um, you know, uh, we'd get interest from, you know, kind of special niche type of uh, independent record labels that would want to re-release our material. And so that's happened a couple of times. So... That's that's kind of why I say I'm still in a rock band is because we continue to get, you know, our material seems to be out there. I'm still in a band. I'm still signed to a record or recording contract, even though it's basically just a packaging and distribution deal. It's still a deal that's you know, um, you know paying us. <laughs> but now there seems to be a new interest and new. Yeah, we just signed a deal with, with uh, 20th Century Music out of Las Vegas. And uh, Dave Tedder, president, we came up with a really, really great um, idea for the uh, new arrival product um, where we were going to, instead of re-releasing the records that were already out there, we decided to kind of compile uh, a few of the tracks from the early stuff, a few of the tracks from um, Delayed, which was the big record we did. And then we had a record we were in the middle of doing in 2001 the follow-up to delayed into the outer side and 9-11 happened and we lost all the funding with the subsequent events of all the economic fallout and so you know that record kind of just sat there and i went and took through the years um i loved those songs so much i just re-recorded them with all sorts of different artists like robbie wyckoff or christine starkey or pam savage and we you know i just kind of put them out there for film and television and there was probably like five or six songs, I believe, from Into the Outer Side that I hadn't done anything with. And so I, we had this meeting, and 
I said, why don't I get somebody else to sing these songs and we'll have this kind of package. So I reached out to my great friend Terry Aluse, a uh, very iconic 80s singer, and uh, Terry's agreed to finish the, the four songs that would be the other four. So there'll be four previously unreleased arrival tracks that'll be out there along with um, some of the favorites that Mark Free and Michael Badiaco sang. Okay. Wow. And when does this all happen? Um, we're trying to get that record released in August. Okay. And the Parade of Lights basically is the event. It's a two-night event um, televised on Nine News. And they, um, the parade uh, route, which is two miles long, each night has 250,000 people lining the parade. Yeah. yeah I got that part. Yeah. And, and the song that was the theme for that for three years was Share the Magic. Now we're caught up, and now you were commissioned to come back uh, the second time for... Light the Lights, which we did this last year. And there's a video out there. There's videos for Share the Magic and Light the Lights on YouTube. Just look those up under Voices on High, and you'll get to see a lot of people singing Christmas. Now the Voices on High, that was a pretty big production for you to put together. Yeah, it's a lot of singers. A lot, a lot of people go, how do you get 50 singers on one song? And it's like, well, you got to be nuts. That's all I'm going to tell you. You got to be driven and very, very crazy. It was, I think it was a labor of love, too. I, well, see, and the, the, we're, we're skipping one piece of the puzzle, which is that the first one I ever did was in 1993 for Children's Hospital, which was every Christmas day. And... For years, people said, you know, Rick, you got to do that again. You got to do that again. And then in 2012, I was compelled to do Share the Magic, and we kind of were off and running, and now it's kind of become a regular thing. I'm that guy. I'm, I'm Captain Christmas. <laughs> well, some of your Christmas songs I just absolutely love, and I think they belong on a Lifetime movie or a Disney, a Disney show of some sort. Well, thank you. Thank you. Well, I, I try. I do try. So go from the parade, and now you're being paraded around on this float, and yeah, the, the float that I ended up designing too, because nobody knew, you know, what to do with that. And I was like, okay, well, I guess the, you know, what what do we want the float to look like? I'm in these meetings, right? And, and all anybody could come up with is like, we just want Rick on the float with a piano. And I just, oh god, that's so dumb, <laughs> you know, please. <laughs> and they, you know, so. I came up with the design of the of the cozy share the magic float, and you know, and I'm on. I was on there with the piano and the and the cozy bear, uh, you know, and of course all the voices on high singers were all walked the parade route with us. I can never leave them out because without everybody's love for the project, it just doesn't happen. And I just have so many great singers that you know, just I mean. I still can't believe what I have in my phone that I can just go, hey, you want to sing? Yeah! You know, and I just... Well, the video is amazing. Absolutely phenomenal. Thank you. Thank you very much. I mean, it really shows the hard work that you put in, shows all the voices, it shows every person that was involved, and you gave everybody equal time almost. I tried. <laughs> I tried. You did. It was very well produced, and if you haven't seen it, Go to his website and check it out. It's beautiful. Well, thank you. You're welcome. Now, let's skip over to the sports teams. <laughs> let's do some sports, people. You got both a football and a baseball team to help write their songs. Let's talk about that. Well, the, the very first one um, was a, and it's just a crazy story that I can't get into now because we just don't have the time for it. But I got a phone call from a gentleman who was literally nothing more than a lifelong baseball fan and a fan of the Colorado Rockies and his vision was he wanted the Colorado Rockies to have a song and he'd been trying for years to get this done he tried all sorts of things and and nobody really came up with anything and he got to me and I said well part of the thing that has to happen is it needs to be an in-game experience that's the problem is you're trying to write a three minute long song that you know the Rockies are telling you they want it to grow organically which means it has to start in the ballpark so I came up with something and we recorded it and the next thing I know the owner of the Colorado Rockies Dick Monfort is coming to the studio to meet me and I'm just like 
and I have to tell you, I have played music in front of thousands of people, thousands, and I've never been stage fright, no nervousness, no nothing. And when the owner of the Colorado Rockies walked through the door of Colorado Sound, I started shaking and my hands were sweating. I'm like, oh my God, I can't believe that guy's here. So what happened? They loved it and they launched it. Um, this was during COVID when they were, com- we were coming out of COVID last season, last baseball season. And the Rockies had got, they had the, the All-Star game was in Denver last year. And so after that, because of all of the, the launch and stuff like that, they did opening day 2.0 and Rock the Rockies, the tune that I wrote, uh, co-wrote with this uh, Keith Johnson, the guy who contacted me, he wanted to help out. Um, opened, uh, was the opening uh, piece to opening day 2.0 and then they played it through the rest of the season. And um, I'm not sure how much they're using it this season. I haven't, because I haven't gone to any games, unfortunately. And, but they did ask to extend the license, so they're, they, that's, you know, they're, that means they're using it, you know. But I just don't know how much, and, and, um, and I'm not really, I'm, I'm not, like, pestering them or anything. I'm just, I'm just like, going, yeah, go ahead, play my song, you know, oh have gosh. fun with that. <laughs> and so from there, the Denver Broncos called? Well, the Broncos thing, that's a totally different thing. That, how that happened, that, that's kind of more... Me being one, a lifelong fan. This will be my 52nd year as a season ticket holder of the Denver Broncos. But also the fact that um, back in 2015, um, the, the Broncos came out with a slogan for their publicity called Time to Ride. And I was sitting there, and the, the, this is the Peyton Manning was still with the team, and the team was on fire. And of course, they went to Super Bowl 50 and won. And so I writ, wrote this piece, Time to Ride. I went, oh, this will be great, man. I'll have another, because I did have a Bronco song way back when that got all sorts of airplay. And so I just said, you know, it's time for me to do this. This is perfect. So I wrote this song, Time to Ride. We recorded it, everything but the lead vocal. And I had so much on my plate where I was finishing the songs volume one and all this other stuff at the time. So I just kind of put that on the back burner. And then the Broncos kind of go in the toilet. You know, Peyton Manning retires. They win Super Bowl 50. Peyton Manning goes and retires. And the team just really stinks for like six years. And so I'm just kind of pushing this thing off, right? And this off season, uh, the Broncos made a blockbuster trade for Russell Wilson from the Seattle Seahawks. And Russ has taken the city by storm, by the way. But at the end of his initial press conference, the very last thing he says, he says, Broncos country, let's ride. And so I went, okay, time to finish that one. <laughs> So we will be finishing Time to Ride. I've got a video presentation that's being done in Los Angeles uh, by um, a, a videographer, producer that works out here. She works on a few uh, big kind of streaming shows, and she's agreed to kind of just do that for me so I can present to the Broncos. Uh, probably in uh, mid-July, we'll probably be uh, meeting with the Broncos. To, um, but they, you know, they kind of already love on me anyway, so... So I think I'm, I'm I, I don't know if it's going to work, but, you know, everybody loves it. So, you know, if they don't, somebody else will. Well, you are the Denver King. <laughs> <laughs> I am Mr. Are. Denver. You are, because you're, you know, you are the guy to go to for all, all music, I, I would say. I've, I've kind of turned into, you know what, really truthfully, mm-hmm. I kind of think that all of this is the reward the universal reward for me never moving out here to Los Angeles because, you know, in the early part of my career, everybody was saying, you got to move to L.A., you got to move to L.A. And I just love, I love my home so much. And I had, you know, I had everything I needed. Well, isn't a lot of different artists from Denver or in Denver? Oh, uh, there's quite a few. There's there's quite Big a few. Big name ones, right? Big name ones. Um, probably the biggest name that's from Colorado, that, aside from, like, John Denver, obviously, um, and he re- he moved to Colorado. He wasn't really from there. Oh yeah, uh, but uh, um, Ryan Tedder from One Republic, and then of course what a big, huge songwriter and producer he became. And uh, of course my great friend Kip Winger, the Winger Brothers, and I kind of came through the industry together. And of course Kip, be- Kip became a huge superstar in the '80s. Um, you know, there's just uh, Lumineers, all sorts. You'll of- be the king of Denver. How's that? I'm okay. That's fine. Uh, now, um, we want to just kind of wrap things up, but you have your RCP, Rick Cabot Podmore Volume 2 coming out. 
Uh, yeah, we're doing the, um, I'm, I've been, again, part of the hard part of the whole COVID thing was that all of a sudden I ended up, um, I have a lot of songs that I write and I take them into the studio immediately and I start recording them. You know, I kind of have this beautiful, uh, there's a wonderful facility I get to work at. I've been working there since 1982, Colorado Sound. It's one of the foremost studios in the country. Uh, it's just amazing. And, you know, a lot of people don't even know it's there. Um, and it's run by my great friend, Kevin Clock. And so I kind of have the luxury of, you know, I get done with it at the piano or I get done with it with a guitar and I don't do anything other than go down to the studio and start recording, which is a beautiful luxury that I have. And, um, but during COVID, you know, we had to, everything kind of, and I ended up with probably, I think at one point I counted that we had about 28 or 29 songs that were unfinished in the production queue that I'd started. And I'm not talking about writing. I'm talking about that we were in the recording process of. And so they were just all sitting there and the songs volume two that I was, you know, and those, these records, these are kind of like a labor of love for me. These are my producer's cuts for film and television. But, you know, I had all these cuts that, you know, I had, wasn't able to finish. So um, I was able to chip away at that during COVID, get in here, get in there, you know, kind of stuff. But we've got most of the record cut. We've been mixing right now. I just finished mixing uh, two pieces, two newer pieces of it. And so I think I've got three other mixes to finish, and that should be done and out uh, digitally in September. Nice. Very good. And so you're going to make a big launch? You're going to... Well, it's going to be a big launch. I'll be sitting there in my living room with my feet up going, Hey, baby! <laughs> How do you like this for a record? There we go. <laughs> the, the, the songs record don't have a big party. I'm sorry. You know, it's not a... It's, it's not the giant searchlight and Let's dropping... Let's have a party. We should have... Doves ...and all that stuff. We don't do that for the songs. You should have a party. Well, you know, I... A parade. You should have a parade. I already have a parade. Well, I've had a parade, I should say. The next, par next parade in Denver's for the Avs. Oh, my goodness. That's, okay. that's the next parade. So, lastly, uh, I heard a little secret, something about an animated project. Yeah, I can't say anything about that. I was told by the executive producer that all I'm allowed to say is that it's a top secret project. <laughs> Why? I, I got the contract for a, an animated pilot, and that's all I can say about it, is that I'm, I'm so grateful. All these things that I, I get to do, all the things you've asked me about, I'm just massively grateful. And, um, and now this, this thing is kind of the, it seems like it's going to be the next new kind of horizon for me. When These will we be able to hear about this secret? <laughs> I'm not in charge of that. I don't know. Well, give me a time frame. By the end of the year or I, summertime? I'm pretty sure that by the end of the year, everybody will know. Okay. Yes, this, this gentleman, and I, again, I'm trying to honor my non-disclosure agreement, but this gentleman's already done two animated series. He's been very successful. He's written children's books, nice. um, you know, and this is his... Uh, his big passion. This is his biggest project to date. Um, I'm so fortunate that a great friend of mine, Mark Oblinger, referred me for this job. Um, and so, uh, so far, so good. Okay. Well, you've heard it here. He's got a secret coming out, and we hopefully will hear about it and listen to this animation thing soon. Are you going to be putting it on your website? Yes, yeah, so obviously I will. Um, part of the part of our agreement is that you know I obviously get to promote that I'm ah. the music creator for this thing. So, Fabulous. yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much for coming down and talking with thank us. You. Is there anything that I missed? I think we got it all. Um, I think so too. I think so too. You are a busy man. You know, you are <laughs> such a busy man. I'm very fortunate to be this busy, and I, again, I just like I used to sit there and say. You know, I'd be so happy if I could just do this every day. And now I'm doing it every day. And guess what? I am very, very happy. It's, it's a wonderful, wonderful thing. Congratulations to you. And we can't wait to hear some more Thank out you. of you. Thank you very much. Thank, thanks, thanks to you guys and, and everybody at uh, Backstage 360. Tell Brian, you know, when he's uh, done handing the headphones to everybody that I said hi.
I will do that. And you can see uh, all of Rick's music on his website, so just go to rickcabotpodmore.com. Follow him on social media so that you can find out specifically when these songs are coming out and when the animation thing is happening, because I'm pretty sure he's going to be posting about it. I'm Kelly Bennett for Backstage 360. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time. Thank you.